was ended up starting her own little business out of her home, making jewelry, and she now has a job as well. Um, in our second group, uh, we had one fellow that missed the last three days because his family went on holiday. Most of the people came early. I would show up and they'd already be camped at the door. Um, taking breaks after the first week, guys, are you going to take your break? Oh, we completely forgot. They'd be so absorbed in what they were doing. Um, afterwards, oftentimes I'd say, you know what, I'd love to say, I got to go pick up my son because they, they just, they loved it. They stayed, they talked, they were so engaged. Um, at the end, they've moved together, especially the, the first group, have stayed in touch and become a real um, network for themselves within the community, uh, especially with their families and um, working together doing stained glass and jewelry making themselves. Um, the pieces that they create, I think I've got, uh, there, oh, there's one of the pieces. This is one of the pieces that they did. This was their, their group panel project. They raffled this off. They organized a raffle, did a raffle. They raised uh, $1,300 just on that piece itself. Um, they had beautiful things. I still bump into people in the community that are wearing the necklaces and the earrings. Uh, one woman was visiting from Norway, and she bought one of the stained glass panels. Uh, they did some individual ones to be her memento from Canada to take back home. Um, I was at Angeline's the other night, and uh, the owner, it's a very upscale restaurant, and they're known for their beauty, their design. People write about them in the Toronto, you know, dine magazines and everything. He would bought all the um, hooks from the blacksmithing, and they were up holding up things in their beautiful space. You know, so they made real things that have real value within the community. Uh, it was just beautiful. Um, what else do we have? Uh, oops. Um, we raised nearly $3,000 for the community. Um, the, the participants themselves were shocked. <laughs> they had no idea. They were in the paper, I think in, we have uh, three different newspapers, and I think they were in the paper every single week. They did press releases, they promoted themselves, people really knew about their sale. They had the sale in front of the, uh, the Learning Center building. They had lots of traffic through. Um, we had people coming up afterwards saying, where can I get this, where can I get that? Uh, a real sense of quality and a, a real value, that what they made actually had value. Um, it was fantastic. Um, I think a really big thing for me was seeing how the team formed. Taking the essential skills and forming it in the way of a business and really working on the team as opposed to individual learning was huge. That, to me, was, was what was key for them to really delve into their essential skills and really push those <laughs> complexity levels of how they engaged. Um, I think that conflict was really great. One of the exercises I, I gave them at the beginning, you guys can do this, take your thumbs and push them together as hard as you can. When you feel that that's conflict, you know, oh yeah, when, do you, when does it feel like that? Sometimes when I'm trying to learn, it feels like that. Sometimes when I'm at, you know, at work and you know, push harder, push harder. I said, now what happens if you drop your right elbow? You feel this extra energy go shooting out. We talked about conflict as energy, you know, and how you direct it. You know, and some people say, well, that's like giving in. It's like, yeah, you can go in and it'll go completely in the wrong direction, not the direction you want. How can you use that someplace else? That's also the creative tension. You know, this is what artists feel. This is what entrepreneurs, because they're really artists as well, that's what they're feeling. And that's the energy that they want to unleash. So you need to be able to facilitate that energy. And within our community, we had, um, we had some great response. Um, we, again, we had um, uh, great response to the newspaper. We have people coming up to us. Uh, editors from the newspaper, different people saying, when are you doing the next artworks? Can I come in? Can I talk to them? What, what's going on? Um, it's, it's really cultivated, I think, a, a huge community presence as well. Um, successes personally, the participants really identified realistic personal goals. Every single day we did reflections and out of those, like, what were the highlights? What actions are you going to take? At the last week, it was all about action plans. Um, they, we did the PDQ testing before and afterwards, so they had a nice profile of some of their literacy challenges. Um, and um, each one of them was hooked into uh, the next steps, whether it was the Learning Center, whether it was Loyalist College, whether it was Career Edge. Um, they had a resume, they had a cover letter, they had references. Uh, one woman after the program, she, she said, you know what, she got a job and she said, the only reason I got the job was Artworks. She said, that's all the owner wanted to talk about. He wanted to talk about the team skills, he wanted to talk about the conflict, he wanted to talk about all the things I learned in, um, in Artworks. Uh, so it, it really worked. 
um, I think a big thing is they demonstrate to themselves what they could accomplish. They had something physical. They had things they could sell. They had community um, value. Um, they really engaged. It wasn't just about their own personal learning and getting the certificate. It was about so much more. Um, well, this is part of the, the marshmallow challenge here. Uh, it was just a, an overall uh, great way of, of presenting the, the skills. Some of the lessons learned, trust the process. Sometimes it's kind of messy. Sometimes you're sort of going, is this really going to work? The individuals, the collaborative learning model is essential um, because the learners actually bring 98% of it. All that I did, all that we did was facilitate. We created an environment of inquiry. We gave them tools to be able to better see themselves, to be better able to communicate. We gave them some structure and some skill with the Leisha curriculum, and we gave them an opportunity to demonstrate uh, real life business and what they would really feel like in the business. Um, the collaborative learning was huge, especially in essential skills. It's not out of a textbook. It's something that is living and breathing. And again, to demonstrate those complexities and understand the complexity levels of the essential skills, that's really what we want to get. Everybody has functioning levels of essential skills. How do we deepen those? How do we really access that com the different complexity levels so that they can really function, uh, especially in our creative rural economy? Um, community was huge for us. It, it always has been with the Learning Center, and the Learning Center has cultivated uh, a community relationship that's been really strong. But um, it really connected these individuals who had not been connected before into the greater community. Um, they were able to demonstrate to themselves and to the community their value. Um, they walked into businesses they'd never walked into before. One group, I did the scavenger hunt for blacksmithing. So, blacksmithing? There aren't any horses around here. Why do we need to do blacksmithing? So we went on a scavenger hunt to see if they could find things that were blacksmith. And one of the places I said you need to go was this art gallery. And two of the learners went in there. And it just so happened that the blacksmith from Bloomfield, not the blacksmith I'd be teaching him, was coming in with a piece that he had made. And Bruce, the blacksmith, uh, they, they went and they said, oh, this is blacksmithing. And they, they told him about the program that they were in. And they were late coming back to class and they were all apologetic because they spent 45 minutes talking to a blacksmith in an art gallery. This would never have happened before. They would never even have walked in there before. But they were able to talk as equals because they said, we're doing blacksmithing too. Uh, it was fabulous, these connections, and, and that they were worthwhile and that what they had creatively meant something and that they were equals. Um, the arts-based programming was fantastic. Again, I'm Leslie, your, your Alicia program is fantastic. And again, there's more just than the art space, but there's the welding and all those things. I strongly recommend you looking at that. It's a, it's a great off-the-shelf resource, flexible enough to use it in different ways. And I think, like your suggestion of sewing and things, you can start to see where it builds. Because this type of learning, especially for essential skills, we found very powerful. Um, so, yeah. What else? Have I missed anything? I'm sorry, I'm sort of um, rushing a little bit here at the end. Some more, I've, I've been talking for a while. Some more comments, questions uh, that you might have? I wish I had known this Alicia was around because I, I basically started everything from scratch, did everything from scratch. And uh, like I said, we've done with the picnic tables, uh, we had seven students do it. And um, one young man who's from Jamaica who found his way to a small Indian reserve in Northern Ontario. Wow. Um, <laughs> Unbelievable. And, uh, and he fit right in. And he fit right in. Um, actually wrote a piece um, on doing building the picnic tables. It was picked up by the Ontario Native Literacy Coalition and it's going to be printed on the NALT. It's going to be again printed in the NALT site. So it was his experience. Um, with building the picnic tables and the essential skills and the frustration he felt with some of the people because they were rushing and uh, teamwork and just talking about all of that. But in the end, we ended up making over a thousand dollars. We got wow. donated. It worked out to about sixty dollars per picnic table. People were buying them. People were calling and leaving messages. Do you have any picnic tables? I like a picnic table. It, like. There was no way we could just keep up with everybody that once they found out great. that we were doing this as a class, um, we couldn't keep up with the people.
Well, and, and that's that I think that just reinforces what we discovered is that community, it's, it's imperative to get, to get, to attach those programs to community, you know, and to really see essential skills in action. That this is what we're talking about. It's not some kind of something out of a book, that these are real things that are going on, and this is what it feels like, you and know. The one thing with the sewing is, um, again, our MTC rep wasn't too pleased with the fact that we were sewing. Um, but I showed her the essential skills that we were using with it, and my students actually made her a pair of loungewear pants. Out of uh, that's and great. Gave it to her as a Christmas <laughs> gift, and she was just over the moon. Well, and I think what's really important is, is again, when you tie it into economy, there's a lot of talk about economics and jobs and that type of stuff. You know, again, a lot of the sustainable businesses and sustainable economy is about individuals having these skills, right? And how does it attach, not just as a hobby, but how does it attach to economy? And I think, um, you know, even from a funding perspective, a lot of uh, community development funding uh, is available for labor force um, skills development. And these, these types of things, tie directly into it. So again, looking around at what your local economy is and being able to do that.